For months, 3i Atlas has been the most perplexing enigma in the sky. An interstellar wanderer, larger than anything we've ever encountered, glowing with an emerald light so intense that it painted the night skies of Earth and unsettled even the most experienced astronomers. From the moment it was first detected, nothing about it made sense. Its scale, its brightness, its rhythm, its strange pulses of energy. But just as humanity began to adjust to its presence, to accept it as a single mysterious anomaly racing toward the sun, the unimaginable happened. Observers watching closely saw it change, not disintegrating in chaos like a dying comet, but dividing smoothly, deliberately into two colossal bodies. This was not fragmentation, this was reproduction. One body continued on its original course, toward the sun, glowing steadily as before while the other shifted, bending its path not randomly but precisely toward Mars. It was a moment that shattered the boundaries of what we thought we knew about celestial objects, forcing scientists, governments and ordinary people alike to ask the same terrifying question. What exactly is 3i Atlas? And what is its true purpose now that it has doubled itself? The event itself unfolded slowly at first, almost imperceptibly. High-resolution imaging of Atlas's coma revealed a strange bulge forming on one side, a swelling of light that refused to dissipate. At first, astronomers thought it might be a temporary flare, the release of gases or dust from the object's surface. But as hours passed, that brightening condensed into something new, a second luminous core, distinct yet tethered, drifting gently away from the original. The world had seen comets fragment before, but never like this. Cometary breakups are chaotic, spraying debris and jagged arcs, leaving clouds of shattered dust that scatter and fade. But Atlas's split was different. It was symmetrical, controlled, like a cell undergoing mitosis, dividing evenly into two complete and self-sustaining entities. Both bodies retained dense cores. Both radiated the same emerald glow. Both pulsed with the exact same rhythm. For scientists glued to their monitors, it was as though the laws of physics had bent before their eyes. No known natural mechanism could account for such an organized division. Instead, what they saw looked intentional, a process that carried with it the haunting suggestion of purpose. Atlas had not broken apart. It had multiplied. Once the split was undeniable, the focus turned to trajectory. Would both bodies follow the same path? Would the second fragment drift aimlessly, carried by inertia into deep space? Orbital calculations. Answered within days, and the results sent shockwaves across the scientific community. The original 3i Atlas maintained its steady arc toward perihelion, its closest pass to the sun. But the second object began to deviate almost immediately. Subtle at first, the shift grew more pronounced with every observation until the numbers revealed a chilling truth. Its path was bending directly toward Mars. This was not random. It was not an accident of celestial mechanics. The new object had stabilized its course into what looked like an intercept with the red planet's orbit. Suddenly, humanity's dreams of Mars, its rovers, orbiters, planned, missions and visions of colonization were cast into jeopardy. A body the size of Atlas hurtling toward Mars could obliterate satellites, destabilize the thin Martian atmosphere, and even send debris cascading toward Earth. And yet, some began to whisper another possibility. What if the course was not destructive, but deliberate? What if Atlas had divided itself so that one half could continue its dance with the sun, while the other made its way to the planet humanity has long seen as its second home? Even more disturbing than the division itself was the strange bond that remained between the two bodies. Instruments across the globe and in orbit detected that their electromagnetic pulses were still synchronized, flashing in tandem despite the growing distance between them. Like twin beacons, they emitted bursts of radiation with uncanny precision, as if still connected by some invisible thread. When plotted, their pulses revealed identical timing, identical frequencies, identical variations, as though each half of Atlas continued to communicate with the other, operating as a single organism spread across millions of kilometers. The implications of this baffled scientists. 
Two separate objects divided and moving along distinct paths should have lost such perfect synchronicity, yet they remained locked in harmony and the effects rippled outward. Satellites orbiting Mars began to register unexplained fluctuations. In their sensors, as if the red planet itself was already within the influence of the approaching body. Even the James Webb Telescope reported interference when attempting to focus on the region near Mars, its instruments clouded by rhythmic distortions aligned with Atlas's twin pulses. The idea took hold that these were not two separate entities, at all but one divided presence, a singular phenomenon maintaining awareness across vast distances. It was not destruction, it was expansion, as orbital paths became clearer, the sense of dread deepened. The second object was not simply passing near Mars, it was converging with alarming precision, its path intersected with the very zone occupied by the planet's satellites and rovers, as though it had chosen the red planet as a target. Was this coincidence or was it intention? Governments scrambled to reposition spacecraft, but private observatories and independent astronomers began to notice something even more bizarre. The second object was not merely glowing. It was emitting structured patterns of light. Spirals, grids, and geometric shapes flashed across its emerald halo as though writing across the sky. Some compared these patterns to mathematical constants. Others pointed out eerie resemblances to ancient symbols found carved into stone on Earth. To many, it looked less like a comet's chaotic reflection of sunlight and more like a message, a display aimed at Mars. If the first atlas fragment was the herald, then the second appeared to be a messenger, a presence with its sights fixed on the red planet, and with every hour that passed, the question became harder to ignore. Was Mars chosen as a destination? A stage or something far more unsettling? Mars, the planet humanity has always dreamed of colonizing, became the stage for something cosmic, something ancient. Dust storms reorganized into spirals of impossible symmetry, the moons Phobos and Deimos glowed with emerald light, and the red planet's crust trembled with rhythmic pulses in harmony with the fragment's energy. Mars was not being struck. It was being activated. The emerald eclipse, the resonance beneath the surface, the sudden silence of our rovers. It all pointed to the same chilling truth. Atlas was not destroying. It was awakening. And then came the echo. The very same pulse. That synchronized the two fragments and turned Mars into a resonant beacon, crossed the void of space and arrived on Earth. At first it was faint, a whisper in the static of radio telescopes, but it grew stronger, structured, undeniable. Patterns emerged, geometry, mathematics, order, the same symbols carved into ancient stones by civilizations long gone, the same myths of twin stars and green serpents dividing the heavens. It was as if Atlas had not only returned to our solar system, but returned to our memory, reminding us of a cycle humanity had witnessed before. NASA's silence became the most telling sign of all. They knew the signals had reached Earth. They knew Atlas had already begun reshaping Mars, and they knew that if this was a cycle, then we were not the first species to watch the sky turn emerald and wonder what comes next. The truth they would not admit was that Voyager, Webb, and now Earth's own instruments all confirmed the same thing. 3i Atlas is not a comet, not an asteroid, not an accident. It is a process, a design, a presence with purpose.